watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 160, Learning X Pages, Part 1. Let's start at the very beginning. And no, I'm not going to sing that. Okay, so I've been wanting to do this for really a couple years, an attempt at least, to go from nothing and assume little to no knowledge of Notes and Domino and show you how to build an app, or I guess show you a way to build an app. Um, so this is going to be a series. I don't know how long it's going to go. I've already recorded, I think, eight or nine nine episodes. It's going to go at least that long. Um, and and the, the goals, a bunch of different goals here is we're going to assume no previous Domino or X-Pages knowledge uh, for the most part. Um, we're going to try to build an app from nothing to something, which has not been done before in Notes and Nine. Uh, so this is this history-making stuff here. Quite honestly, let's let's face it. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna try to explain different techniques, you know, because when you when you do all this development, there's five ways to do everything, right? So so for right or wrong, I'm gonna try to you know hit which ones I, I know at least, um, and we're gonna try to use some popular tools and enhancements to make life easier. So something like the Bootstrap project from OpenNTF, the OpenNTF API, Xlog Reader. Um, source control. We're, we're going to touch all of that stuff, um, and I'm I am going to assume that um, the the latest version is is in play because that's what I use. And if, if you don't use that, then some things may be different. Uh, but that's going to be 9.0.1. Um, really fixed pack two, quite honestly, at the moment. Um, source control, as I said, we're going to use source control, and don't panic. Uh, but we're going to favor Java over server-side JavaScript. So um, we're going to do that. So let's talk about that. Um, as I said, we're going to we're going to heavily kind of lean towards Java over server-side JavaScript. Um, it, it's we're going to use server-side JavaScript. Absolutely. We're going to use it here and there. Um, and, it, and it does not mean that you need to use Java to build a next pages app. I'm not getting into that debate. Um, it does not mean Marky Roden was right. Uh, because he wasn't. Um, and if you want any further discussion or, or want to review that debate, um, let's go to, you can go to Notes 9 141 um, to, to see that. Uh, the main reason why I'm favoring Java is because um, I really want to get into the concept of a business API, you know, and, and, and kind of show you how I use some of that stuff in the day job. Um, I'm also getting a bunch of emails from people asking for more of this, how do I get into Java, and especially in the X pages context, because quite honestly, I, don't, I couldn't help you get into Java without the X pages context. Um, and and there's there's just more interest in that, so we're gonna we're gonna try to do that, and this is how I do things every day. Uh, so quite honestly, it's just a little easier for me. Not that this is gonna be the greatest app in the world, um, uh, probably won't be, um, but this is how I build apps. So this is how I'm gonna use this series. Okay, so when you think of an X Pages application, there's a, there's a bunch of best practices that I think are are kind of common or so. Um, what you really need to do, this isn't like the old days of the notes client development where you could just sit down and code and uh, again I don't know how other you know what you can do with other development methodologies out there but you gotta make a good plan first. You gotta you gotta do some low fidelity prototyping you know and what, what does that mean? That's like that's like the mocking up screens. There's lots of apps and websites that let you do that and Balsamic is a good one. If you just don't want to do that then yeah crayons can work too. Um, so make a plan, try to stick with it, kind of think it through before you even touch any, any code. Okay. That's, that's the, the absolute number one best practice. Um, the next is to be very consistent in your coding. So do things the same way consistent consistently um, it's going to help you when you come back to it maybe six months later it's going to help you develop good habits uh, you just want to be consistent not across the board yeah but that that's not going to work for me in this series um, so do as I suggest you do as I say it and, and not as I do uh, because quite honestly I'm just going to make this up as I go um, again I have built some episodes ahead of time but but not too far um, I only have so much time for notes of nine, so if I sit down and do a mass plan, uh, then I'm never going to get the series out. Uh, I'm also 
really not going to be consistent. I'm going to jump around, I'm sure, because, you know, just the nature of working with the videos. And, and I do want to show you multiple ways to do the same thing. And I'm not saying the one way is right and the other way is wrong or so, but just in, a, in my attempt to kind of go through this, it's going to be inconsistent, okay? And again, like, I, I'm only playing this so much. Okay, uh, another thing in this series that, that you do need to keep in mind is uh, I'm really not the greatest X page developer in the world. Um, there's a lot of smarter people out there, and he um, uh, and and they um, hang out in Stack Overflow. Uh, but I try, you know, so I try to be better um, every day, which I, I assume you do too. Um, so if I do something wrong, yeah, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I don't know how far I'm going to take this because actually I, there's other apps I want to build, and I'm going to try to record those. Um, so this app that we're going to do is kind of like a, a contact management type app, very, very common. But I want to do something for my tree in a truck kind of thing, which which I think I talked about a year or so ago. Um, and that's, that's actually coming up soon for Thanksgiving. Uh, everyone wants to do a project tracker help desk, so I might as well get in on that too. So hopefully this won't be the only app build I at least attempt. So, so the future of this series and the video um, really depends on you. Um, and, and your involvement on, on how it goes. So, so I want you to, I would like you to ask questions and, and, and make comments on the website, uh, make suggestions because again, um, it's, it's really kind of like, you know, I'm only going to show you so much, so I, I could use other people to help fill in the blanks. Um, and if there's a right or wrong, better right or wrong, or if there's a better way, then, uh, I'd be interested in hearing it myself. Um, finally, uh, trap it up that uh, I stole this uh, title. Um, from Declan Lynch's original blog series. Uh, he did this amazing 54-part series when no one else was doing, uh, putting out material back in the day. Uh, so I did want to kind of honor him. Um, the future shows are, are going to have very little inter introduction. We're going to just kind of get right into it because I assume you might watch a show, a show, a show. Uh, so I'm not going to do the music thing in the front and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to try to have good continuity between one show where one leaves off, the other picks up. I'm not quite sure how successful I'm going to be on that. And somewhere in the middle of this series, I am going to jump my resolution to the bigger resolution, which I've been talking about the last couple shows. And finally, I did want to just mention that this is a, a not only just a hackathon effort, this is a Code for Tim effort. And with all that being said, let's get started. Okay, so I went through the install on the Domino Designer file. Uh, which I installed the notes client, the designer client, and the administrator client. I've installed the fix pack, and now we're ready to uh, fire it up. I've got my ID file here. That was previously given to me from my administrator, which is my uh, puppy. You fill in your name. Ideally, ID Vault comes handy in here. I just don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, I might have had that wrong. Oops. Okay, so we browse to our file. I had put in that up the, the IP address for the server so it knew where it was. We click open. We copy in our directory. It wants the password. It didn't find my server right away because I, I, my domain is actually ni9, not notes9. I forget that often. It does have to match. And we go on with the install. Okay, and now we have notes running. Okay, but this is so uh, useless. Uh, to me. Uh, I don't know why they have it in the product. Um, so we're going to come here and we're going to go to um, Applications Workspace. I'm going to say Set Bookmark as Homepage. This is the way it used to be. This is the way it should be. It just should be a better workspace. So that we can now have tabs. It's like an iPad, really. Um, but tabs for all our applications, our templates, um, etc. Okay, now before we anything else we're going to close this down and we're going to open notepad and we're going to make an adjustment here and 
I forget if I'm going to need to do this as an administrator or not. So we're going to just try it. So we're going to go to our computer. And we're going to go to our install directory, notes, data. I think it's, um, that's not it. Data, it's, I wonder if we have to actually run designer first. Oh, hold on. We want to make an adjustment to designer. I'm going to actually run designer first just to see if that makes a difference here. So we're looking for this framework directory. And let's come back and try this again. Computer. Notes. There it is. I'm, I might not have been. I forget if that was there or not. But we went in here. So framework RCP. Uh, is it deploy? JVM. We want to update this file. We'll try open with Notepad and yeah. all right. We'll just do it this way. RCP deploy and then start out start again this may not work because sometimes I get permission problems here I have to run notepad as administrator so what we're gonna do is change these three numbers here and there's been a lot of talk about this on the internet so it's nothing new I'll bring up the little tech note that we're kinda going to go by here so you can see that this is actually an IBM recommended thing Oops. is we want to basically hit these numbers here uh, assuming you've got at least two gigabytes of RAM so 1024 megabytes 512 megabytes and 512 kilobytes okay and these actually I think used to be lower um, I thought they were supposed to up, the, up, the, up those numbers so I'm not quite sure how much they, they upped them 512 512 is this gonna save it is not going to save because Windows 7 sucks. Um, and I don't know how to do that. So our last attempt here before we move on is we're going to come back in here to all programs. And we're going to find accessories, notepad, run as administrator. And again, this is all because uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, so we'll do this again. Admin is not my strong suit right now. 1024, 512, 512. And what this does, and again, you can read the tech note yourself, but what this does is it sets the maximum. It's all about how designer uses memory. So this is a performance boost. Uh, this is something you want to do. And keep in mind that when you upgrade DOM, you know, designer version stuff, often I believe it does Re, it, it rewrites over that so you lose those settings and you're going to have to do it again. So now if we go back into designer there's a preference here where you can kind of watch this a little bit. Preference uh, under general show heap status. Uh, again that's like your available memory. So again it's it's of right now we're not using much because I don't have any databases open but as databases get open you'll see it, it grow. And we up the limit um, to a, a gigabyte, basically. And that is uh, probably the most important tweak you, you will want to do here. Now, the next thing you might want to do, and I, I usually do, I don't always do all of these, I just do some of these, is, but if you if you go to Nathan Freeman's blog, he's got a PD, oops, I might not even have a PDF viewer installed here. All right, well, okay, so if you go to Nathan Freeman's 
blog, The Rabbit Hole. He's got a great document here on what he calls Taming Domino Designer. And he's got all sorts of preferences and, and things of that nature. So I highly recommend you check that out. Now, again, I don't do all of these, um, but, but I do do some of these all the time. Um, so if we go into Preferences, um, you know, for instance, Spell Check, somewhere you can turn the... Uh, uh, it's under, actually, it's under general editors, text editors, spelling. So uh, you don't need to have spell check going on in your code, uh, typically, um, for your variable names and, and whatever else. Another one I like to hit is under XML. And there's XML files, then editor, line width, you know, for gosh sake, bump that up, because uh, most of us do have bigger um, screens. Um, I like to do this split multiple attributes on each line. I think that's a little easier to read. Um, content assist. He recommends turning this off. I, I quite honestly, I forget what that one does. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it off for now and see what it does. Um, and we don't really need to mess with grammar, I don't think so. I do like this one, this syntax coloring. So this is what your your syntax coloring looks like. I do kind of like this um, C data one that he suggests turn the background to like a nice little yellow, and that highlights basically your your server-side JavaScript or, or things on the page or so, so I, I, I kind of like that one. To close that. Preferences, come back in here, and let's go up to Java, because if you follow these videos, you are going to be doing some Java um, at some point, ideally. Um, editor typing. And we're going to automatically add some semicolons and braces at the correct position. I'm going to hit these, the save actions to just do some formatting on save, organize our imports, uh, and let's turn on these additional actions for now and you can actually you can actually import these so one of the one of the things you you do want to keep in mind here is is if you're working with a team um, you, you should have all the same settings throughout your team um, especially if you're talking about anything that does with formatting source code uh, and that's something we're working at on, in, in the day job because there's four of us or so because if, if you have a different formatting session or setting than somebody else and you're using source control then it's going to look like there's a lot more changes that go on between you than there really are and that might get confusing so so whatever preferences you have especially with the formatting of source code should be consistent throughout the the members of a, of a team all right i'm trying to think if there's anything else of of interest in here under general appearance he rec actually recommends turning off his matching brackets I, I like having that on um, so I kinda know where things are oh and and the, the most important one which I, I probably can't do but is font um, because the programming font, you know, is, is very crucial. And there is only one true programming font, and I don't believe I have it installed on this machine yet. Um, but it, the one true one is Consolas. And anyone else who says anything else would probably be, oh, it is here. So, so we're going to turn that on to Consolas. And there's probably other places that not the, for the Java editor. You can change that, I'm sure, for the Lotus Script editor. You just kind of have to find all that stuff. Um, and I'm not going to take the time to do that now, but at least Java is going to have the, the one font to roll them all. Okay, and that's kind of designer, and that should be, uh, you know, pretty much ready to go. And that's the demo. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to drop a comment or uh, hit me on the email. And I thank you for your time.